3C405, or as it's more commonly known as, Cygnus A. Cygnus A is the third strongest radio source in our sky, after the Sun and Cassiopeia A, and is by far the closest powerful radio galaxy and the strongest source of radio emission outside our galaxy. Cygnus A was also the first radio galaxy ever detected. Now you are probably thinking to yourself, what exactly is a radio galaxy? And how is it different to a galaxy like ours? Radio galaxies are a type of active galaxy that are very luminous at radio wavelengths, and therefore are very bright when looking at them through the right part of the spectrum. That's where Heinrich Hertz comes in. He artificially generated radio waves in 1888, and therefore physically proved that radio wavelengths existed. Then, 43 years later, Carl Jansky detected radio waves from space, and was the catalyst for the birth of this new subfield in astronomy, and was also deemed the father of radio astronomy, despite never actually being an astronomer himself. After this discovery, amateur astronomer Grote Rieber built a homemade radio telescope in his backyard. In 1937, Rieber reveals radio waves coming from the Milky Way, and then in 1939 he discovers Cygnus A, the first radio galaxy ever discovered. Cygnus A was not clearly identified until 1951, when it was identified with an optical source and was officially made the first radio galaxy discovered. The amazing thing with Cygnus A is that it is about 600 to 700 million light years away from Earth, which means that the light we are seeing from Cygnus A is more than three times the age of the first dinosaur ever to roam the Earth. This galaxy is among the giants of the universe, with the mass estimated at a hundred trillion times the Sun's mass. It is said to be about 500,000 light years across, and it is estimated that the total power radiated by the galaxy is 10 to the 38 watts which is millions of times more than the power given from the entire Milky Way. Cygnus A is located in the constellation of Cygnus, which is a northern constellation lying on the plain of the Milky Way. Its name is derived from the Greek word for swan. The Swan is one of the most recognisable constellations of the northern summer and autumn, and is known as the Northern Cross in the Northern Hemisphere. In contrast to our Southern Cross here in New Zealand and the Southern Hemisphere. Cygnus was first catalogued by the Greek astronomer Ptolemy in the 2nd century. The Cygnus constellation is associated with several myths, but most frequently involving Zeus, who transforms into a swan to seduce the Spartan queen later. A bit messed up if you ask me, but you know what those Greeks and Romans were like with their mythology. Anyway, Cygnus A has a certain majestic beauty if viewed through the right telescope and has some amazing facts to go with it, including some very impressive titles that not much else in the night sky can stand up to. I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for it next time I'm behind a telescope. How about you?